Now with that, we're gonna hand it back. How's it going over there, Dan and Kate? How are you doing, Kate, seeing that in person? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Dan had to take that entire segment because I couldn't talk. That was there, incredible. There it is. We can see the booster coming back in now through the plume. At least it looks that way to us. Um, it's incredible that it basically returns. It looks like a speeding, um, just Ship like this silver normal. flare uh, coming back to the, the, once again, we are standing by for uh, 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 attempting to catch the booster at the tower. This would be the second tower catch. Booster landing for See it, 13 engines. Booster now hovering as it aligns with the tower for catch. Booster coming in. Get ready to, for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. You heard it here, Vexilla has caught the booster. Once again, for the second time, a successful catch by the launch tower. This is the same tower, the launch pad, where that booster took off from just seven and a half minutes ago. Great view from the well chopstick arms, looking at those hypersonic grid fins that steer the booster for that precision landing. And it almost I mean, looks like can, it's flapping its wings. Yeah, you can <laughs> see just how small that catch fitting is, too, on something that's just so massive. That was absolutely insane. <laughs> Meanwhile. We're not done, but wait, not there's more. Yet. Wow, that is just absolutely stunning. And this, of course. Okay, so what uh, we have witnessed the there is the second the booster. successful booster capture there, that uh, famous chopsticks maneuver. Uh, completely successful, it seems, at Boca Chica in Texas. Thomas Moore still with me. Uh, it was textbook, wasn't it? Everything went according to plan. Yeah, it's almost so incredible that it looks like a computer game. <laughs> it was amazing to see a huge uh, piece of metal coming out of the sky at supersonic sc uh, speed, then slowing to a hover, uh, but with point accuracy, mm. precision, um, right next to the tower in a, in a ball of flame. It really does look quite alarming. Um, and then those arms just coming in and just grabbing the rocket safely, and, and that, could in future be turned around extremely quickly. It is, it is safe there and, and it could be re reused, bolted onto a, uh, another uh, starship and, and launched again. Mm. And uh, when it came in initially it were on 13 engines, which was rapidly cut down to mm. three, but, but as you say, the, the precision and the, the way that it hovered yeah. The, the accuracy is astounding. And this is autonomously. The, the ship is doing it at, on its own. Um, and, and while all the excitement is clearly looking at this chopsticks manoeuvre, the top half of the rocket is still going around the planet um, and, and doing all the other mission-critical stuff that they need to do just to, to prove that this uh, spaceship is... Uh, getting towards operational level. This is still considered a, an experimental vehicle, a prototype uh, for the kind of rocket we're going to need to take people and lots of cargo into space, uh, to into orbit and, and beyond, to the moon and, and even to Mars. And Elon Musk wants a, 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 a self-sustaining city on Mars within 20 years. That's an awful lot of equipment that's going to be leaving the planet. Uh, and we, we've seen that uh, famous chopsticks manoeuvre, but I mean, it's not the, the culmination, the, the mission isn't over yet, as you're saying. That's right. So this time round, they're, they're not only testing uh, various other things, so the structural uh, changes to the rocket itself. So they've improved the heat shield so that uh, when it comes down, it can quickly be turned around. You don't want to be a situation, as often was the case with, for example, the space shuttle, where 
uh, heat shield tiles would fall away and need to be repaired. They want to turn this round just like a, an aircraft is at, a, at an airport. You know, you, you refuel, you reload and you, you go again. Uh, that's how you get the kind of economies scale, of scale with an aircraft and also with a spaceship in, in future. They're also looking at um, dummy satellite deployment in space this time round. So uh, there's lots of satellites that need to go into orbit. Elon Musk wants to prove that the Starship is capable of doing that. That's the way he's going to attract commercial business, people signing contracts now for future missions. Mm. And a lot of work has, has gone on prior to, to this date. The, the vehicle's avionics underwent a complete redesign. There's a lot of, of work that has, has changed and been developed since the last flight test. That's right. He, he innovates through failure. So everything that broke last time, he'll fix and try and do again. Now, uh, many traditional space companies would do it incrementally. He just breaks everything and, and just just completely rips everything up and, 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 uh, and goes for revolution, not evolution. Uh, and that's the way he designs these spacecraft so quickly. And he's got a lot of work to do because the intention is that come mid-2027, a version of the Starship is going to be landing people on the moon. Now, that's a long way away, and to get there, you're not only going to have to uh, get a transporting uh, Starship into orbit around the Earth, but you're also then going to have to refuel it with other sta Starships acting as tankers. Uh, that's yet to be proven that, uh, that he could do that. So a lot of milestones need to be done. There are 25 flights planned for this year alone. That's the pace of development you're now going to be looking at for this rocket.